Hey, and welcome to our Friday afternoon live broadcast and rebroadcast. If you're jumping on uh, with us on YouTube or later on on our Facebook page, we welcome you. Either way, you decide to join us. Today, we're going to be talking about a maturing keto lifestyle, and Michael and I will be sharing some of the transitions or maturities that we have gone through over the last couple of years and explain to you why that's important and why it is you should always be transitioning, tweaking, and maturing in it in any kind of lifestyle that you have in regards to nutrition and fitness. If you are joining us for the first time, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Diane and this is Michael. And together we share what it is that we're doing in our intermittent fasting and keto-like lifestyle with the two of us, as well as some of the things that we're doing in our family and with our general overall lifestyle. Um, I am the founder and creator of Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman. And in that course, I teach women how to intermittent fast and develop a keto-like lifestyle to heal their bodies. We've moved over into this community to also help the men in our lives and our families incorporate this type of lifestyle so that we can pay it forward and develop really healthy, happy families. So like I said, today we are going to be talking about about how to or why it is important to mature and Michael and I will share a little bit of our journey with what it is that we're doing with this lifestyle. I know when I first started um, intermittent fasting and trying to figure out the whole keto life thing, um, it was really frustrating for me because there wasn't a whole lot of information available and I spent a good year or so really frustrated sort of tweaking some things and trying to find my way and eventually we developed this keto like lifestyle that really has served us and our family well and to just define that again keto like is kind of some the title came about from what Michael really wanted to do with helping me in my journey and that was he saw what I was doing but didn't really want to go as deeply right like there were certain things he just wasn't willing to give up and we didn't by any means want to follow the ketogenic lifestyle not that that's a bad thing there are some people who really thrive in that but with a young family two kids at home and the fact that we still enjoy certain aspects of what, it, what we want to do socially, that we weren't willing to go that deep. We weren't willing to count macros. We weren't willing to test our blood to see if we were ketogenic. We were just trusting that if we fasted in a certain way and developed a certain lifestyle where we're very conscious about our carbohydrates, that we could really live the healthy life that we wanted to, to live. And Michael, how would you say that that's been transitioning for us? Well, I definitely uh, think that it's okay to take your time and take baby steps into this, because for me personally, it was it was a little bit scary even hearing the word. I mean, the word fasting alone to me was like, like what? Like, there's no way. I I love my food. I love my breakfast. I love my oatmeal. I used to have the big huge thing of oatmeal and a bunch of fruit and. Uh, eggs and spinach, you know, that was my thing. And I loved it every morning, a little coconut oil on my oatmeal. So to hear these words, you know, keto and uh, extended fasting, intermittent fasting, uh, it just wasn't going to be a part of my life. You know I mean, so Diane started kind of dipping into it and studying it and, uh, and started heading down that direction. And so, of course, anything she does, she kind of pulls, hey, you should, you need to check this. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So it was more like this. <laughs> Do you really need those two waffles with peanut butter and a banana on it to start your day? Do you understand how many hey, that was my <laughs> that was my workout fuel, okay? Yeah. But now we've learned you don't have to do that anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally have learned. So, but so that's a good, but that's a good point. And I know there's a lot of women who ask, like, how can we help our husbands? You know, it was that thing where we both believed that you had to have two waffles, peanut butter, and some banana on it be in order to fuel your workout. And that's true when you're burning sugar as your fuel, but it also means that you're going to bonk and then need to eat immediately afterwards. And then for me, what it ended up doing was leading me down a path of being a pre-diabetic, despite the fact that I was eating gluten-free, dairy-free waffles with all natural peanut butter and organic bananas. Like that stuff doesn't matter. When your body can't break down sugar, it can't break down sugar. And when it's not breaking down sugar, it's, it's backing up in sugar. And then you're not losing weight and you're pre-diabetic and you're insulin resistant because it doesn't even know what to do with that sugar anymore. So 
I was running 10 miles a day. I was eating two every two hours, six times a day. Uh, and I was doing all those things I need to do to fuel my body. And what I was doing was actually just stopping it in its tracks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so you learned that from watching me, right. That you didn't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And it was, uh, for me starting out, it was pretty daunting just thinking of the fact that, okay, what am I going to do when I have to work and I'm not going to have, you know, some fuel for my body? Am I just going to conk out? Well, I was already conking out. So that huge breakfast that I was having halfway through the morning, I would conk out. I mean, I'd have friends talking to me at work and I, I can barely keep my eyes open. So that wasn't working, obviously. Uh, so uh, it's definitely been baby steps. And now we're in a whole different uh, thing that we're doing now. So I think it's okay to take those baby steps. Like I started out doing uh, intermittent fasting with Diane and uh, living a keto like, like we're watching our carbs and being very conscious of that. Well, and we cut out more sugar fat. carbs, I think, first. And right. so you know, we were like, okay, well, we don't need to eat, you know, we'll take the treats out. Um, so we took the treats out and then, okay, well, yeah, we don't need fruit. Like fruit was that thing for me that was really keeping me stuck. So I'm like, okay. So then I went to like, I'll only eat an apple every Tuesday and Thursday. And I kind of like weaned myself from my fruit necessities or addiction. And now it's like, I don't even like I very rarely eat fruit. And when I do, it's very small servings. And I went from drinking a bottle of wine a night while I was making dinner. to like, I'll just have a glass of Pinot Noir because it's lower in carb count. So now I look at a glass of wine and go, mm, don't even have any interest in it. And so the best advice we can give you guys is to allow yourself to mature through this lifestyle and let your body really tell you the signs and signals of when it needs to get to that next step. So we are very much keto-ish than keto-like, I think, these days. Because now we look at food because our body is so efficient at burning fat as its source of energy. And we're supplementing ourselves now to enhance that. That we look at something that we used to make like, well, it, we're conscious about it. And we go, hmm, nah. We don't really need it, um, but we couldn't have done that in the beginning. So it's okay to change your path. It's okay to to redefine what keto like is for you. It's okay to not fast for 20 hours once you're healed. You can make some exceptions to those type of things as you mature, as your body gets healed, as you're in tuned to listening to the signs and signals that your body is sending you, you're no longer discounting them as something else, but you go, oh, okay, well, yeah, like I can tell when I look at a glass of wine that my body's not going to like it. And then I can make a very conscious decision to say, no, I think I'll just have some water because water is going to make me feel fantastic and wine's going to make me feel horrible. But that takes maturity and that takes time and that takes consistency. And I wasn't there a year ago and I probably wasn't even there six months ago, but now we're doing things very deliberately to take ourselves to the next level. Yeah. And we weren't even working out. I mean like, and we're workout people. And when we started this journey, it was like, let's chill with that. You know, and I think it was looking back at it now, it was more of a mental hurdle for us because it's like, okay, if we're not fueling our bodies, we're going to feel like crap when we start working out. Well, I out. did feel like crap in the beginning. Yeah, yeah because you're still a sugar burner. Right. So you you don't understand yet that, yeah, that's not really working because your body's not even, you're not fat adaptive and you're not like really at that level yet to even start working out. So for us, we didn't even work out for a while. Well, we couldn't because you can't, I, you know, I talk a lot, we talk a lot in our F3 course about um, athletic mindset and a winner's mindset and having this mindset of improving in what it is you want to do. And so for me, I had to go backwards. I had to go back in my efforts and I had to go back in the results of what I was doing with working out. Like, yeah, working, running 10 miles a day wasn't doing anything for me when I was a sugar burner, but I love to work out and I love to run, but there was no way I could have run 10 miles not knowing how to fuel my body properly for that as an IF keto-like woman. And so I had to learn how to fuel my body properly to be able to work out at the athletic mindset that I like to work out at. Like I track my goals, I track my times, I track certain things in my workouts because that's how I gauge getting better and I wanna get better.
I have that mindset. For some people who don't have that mindset, um, you might not have to give up working out. If maybe your thing for movement is going out on a walk with your dog, like you don't have to give up working out for that. But I'm athletic in what I do in my workouts. And Michael's athletic in what he does with his workouts. And so we had to give our body time to adjust. And the way we were fasting, very clean for 20 hours and then feasting for 20, very conscious about our carbohydrates. Um, we didn't have the fuel available to really give us what we wanted. Again, that's not true of everybody. Some people can do that very well. But for me, I don't like that feeling. I like to feel energized. It's like I like to feel that buzz of being in that energized sense of calm. And I didn't find that I had that uh, the way I was doing it when I was healing myself. So we made some transitions now that we're healed. And I have to say my husband, my very handsome husband, um, is wearing like I think two sizes smaller. Oh uh, yeah, two. I, I just discovered that <laughs> two sizes smaller than he was when he was very consciously consuming his carbs, and now has changed some things as well. So he's gotten himself to that next level without even trying. Um, but it's because we had to be open to where we wanted to take ourselves next, and that takes that maturity thing, like letting go of okay, I don't have to do it the way I did it before when I was in this season of my intermittent fasting and keto like lifestyle. Now I can do it this way because what we have found with where we are now with adding in the intense level of fitness that we thrive in we absolutely love it that we don't have to necessarily beat ourselves in the ground to get that same feeling or those same results because our intermittent fasting is contributing to that or keto like lifestyles contributing to that and our supplementation is contributing to that so we still have this really well balanced life but we're thriving at the intensity level that we enjoy yeah. Would that be a good yeah. way to describe it? Yeah, absolutely. And my husband's down two pant sizes. I just bought him a new pair of pants today, by the way. Oh, Smart, good. Size small. I need some. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm digging to that, uh, you know, that pile that you keep. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> you emergency, know, the, yeah. The emergency, uh, I have the smaller ones and then the bigger ones. And I think I'm just going to dump the bigger ones. I'm going to stay with the smaller ones. Yeah, because we're staying on this lifestyle. Yeah. So... I guess our message today was like, it's okay to change. It's okay to tweak things. It's okay to experiment. You have to understand what the end goal is. In the beginning, the end goal for me was to be not sick. The end goal for me was to be not pre-diabetic, to not be insulin resistant, to not carry around body fat in places I didn't even know I could carry around body fat because my body didn't have the ability to burn it off. Um, it was getting my mind back. I'm still working on that pretty intensely because I know that Alzheimer's and dementia is in my future. I want it to be as far in my future as I could possibly have it. Um, and maybe I won't, maybe I won't even get to that point of realizing I have Alzheimer's and dementia. I don't know, but I'm intensely working on my brain health because the rest of my body is fine um and so you can tweak those things you can you can change your fasting you don't have to stay so steadfast in one thing that you're going to not have the opportunity to experience another level or experience something that's completely new by thinking that there's one set of rules maturity will come with this Comfort will come with this. A sense of healing will come with this. And then when you have all of that, you'll have the confidence to put yourself out there and try something new and be willing to take the chance that it might not work perfectly. Michael and I have done some things that haven't worked perfectly. That's okay. We have that maturity and we have that confidence and we have that past experience with us that we can go, okay, that didn't work. Let's go back to this or let's try it a different way. And that's really what helps you keep a lifestyle and what makes this so different from a diet. A diet has a day one and it has a day 30 or it has a day 60 or it has a day 120 or whatever it is. So a diet is for a set period of time. A lifestyle is you having the opportunity to really enjoy and appreciate a certain way of living and then let it manifest its way through your lifestyle. And that's what we really love and really want to share with you guys here that there's going to be some tweaks and there's going to be some changes and there's going to be something that Michael and I go, wow, we totally just found this thing and it's so amazing and this is what it's done for us. Have you ever thought about it or have you tried to put um, 
my thing now is, you know, I haven't been drinking any shakes lately. And so I'm like, where do I put my collagen protein? So I had to find a different place to put my collagen protein. And I'm absolutely loving it because I don't break my fast with the shake any every day anymore. But I'm researching shakes because I miss my shakes, but I don't want one with a lot of carbs. So I'm going to share that with you guys when I find that shake that's like does everything that I need for myself, makes my life super simple, and I can put my collagen back in it. So we're going to be involved, evolving, and we encourage you guys to involve, evolve yourselves as well and really be willing to try some new things and know that they're not all going to work, but that's okay. Um, and then if they do work, find a way to add them in, right, and, yeah. and, and change your schedule so that they fit. And don't be caught off guard about something that we're doing when you go, wait a minute, I thought that you said, well, yeah, if you're in that early stage, yeah. we still do mean that for – when you're yes. just starting out, yes. but we're in a different stage now is why we started the new course. Uh, so being in a different stage where it's a different level and a whole different practice from what we were doing before. That's right. Okay. Right. And I'm, I'm hoping, and, and I'm going to um, actually be interviewing my, my friend, um, Margaret, who is a running coach. Um, and she's 55 and she's living this lifestyle. She's taking my courses and she's running at her best running times um, as a competitive runner at 55 fasted um and dirty fasting up her runs and um she's just amazing and so inspiring for me it makes me want to run a half marathon again maybe i don't know yeah you'd be on um, your own for that yeah i'll be on my own for that <laughs> one uh, but you know what i mean it's like so there's those things that are going to happen where i thought oh god i'll never run a half marathon again but i'm seeing what she's doing and how she's doing it and how she's filling her body and i'm like oh i could do that i could totally do that and would probably have the best experiences out of my other half marathon experiences so never say you won't or never say never again because you just don't know what those opportunities are going to be opened up for you when things in your life change um and i'm hoping that michael and i especially to Together as a married couple and what we're doing with our kids will allow us an opportunity to have some experiences that we never imagined as we're aging because the life that we're living is is really opening up for us because we're happy and we're healthy and we're mobile and uh, more injury free and and we have our minds and and that's really exciting for us especially what we're doing with Gabby I'm um, trying to help her with what it is that she's doing with her running like we need to be on our game because our philosophy as parents is to never shove our kids out and say go be great at something um, we want to experience it with them and we want to be involved in their lives and so for us to stay involved in our kids lives we have to keep evolving ourselves and making sure that we're on top of our our game yeah. um let me see if i can read some comments here. i'll see if i can do it on my ipad uh so that i am not up in your face let's see um if i can get that up here and if you tried to join us on instagram for what we were talking about with grit i'm sorry it took us so long to get up for some reason like instagram was down which is a scary thing right like Instagram being down like what makes that happen um, but we got on eventually so we'll record that and put that up in a blog for you guys um, as well okay so let me read the comments here and welcome everybody for joining uh, us this afternoon Janet I'm so excited that you finally caught us live it's so nice to have you here with us Linda hello she finally caught us live awesome uh, feeling so different now have lost the cravings for sugars and carbs that's fantastic the scale has actually started to move in the right direction that's fantastic too um, and you're totally welcome Linda we we love having you in this community and with time and consistency, things get better. Trust me, this one here would have never believed he would have been down two pant sizes without trying. The beauty of this type of lifestyle is that you just live it and things happened uh, for us. I would, we call it magically um, because you're not hyper focused on it and it's not a success or failure. It's just to get up every day and practice it. And then what you'll notice is you'll have these aha moments sometimes when you wake up and you'll be like, Wow, whose body is connected to my head because things will happen in your sleep that are amazing and um, and you'll and it'll be the easiest thing you've ever done you've ever done to improve uh, your overall health and well-being so thanks for jumping on with us we appreciate you trusting us Janet I noticed the same with regards to alcohol I used to make myself an incredible cocktail when I got home or had some beer or a large glass of wine no interest at all yeah and that'll ebb and flow too so don't be surprised if one one day you're like oh man I just want to have a big glass of wine and and you'll probably enjoy your big glass of wine and then you can decide how that how that felt for you the next day um you know, drinking a glass of wine at home and drinking a glass of wine out is two different things. So we've changed some boundaries that we've had for ourselves and some ways that we've done our life around alcohol as well. And so, you know, it was like, um, 
we would only I would only drink a glass of wine when I was out because when you buy a glass of wine and you're out they pour you an actual serving as opposed to a glass of wine at home that could be like a serving this big so um, if you miss your wine or you're in a social situation and you're out just remember serving sizes are more realistic when you're out that might make you feel different than if you have a serving a glass of wine at home that's this big too so um, not pushing alcohol in any way but just so you know that you're gonna ebb and flow those feelings um, as well and that's fine uh, Roseanne you guys talk about electrolytes sometimes. What do you want to know about electrolytes? Uh, we could probably talk about it right now, Roseanne, if you want. Uh, Janet, getting my husband to give up the mindset has been the struggle, but I don't push him. He sees what I do. He sees the weight loss and better sleep. He can choose or not. Yeah, Janet, he probably will choose because um, it just happens when you're living in the same house with someone unless he goes out of his way to be different than you. Michael is a great husband in that regard for me because he just sort of does what I do and our kids sort of just do what I do so it's been really easy for us as a family to transition over into this because um, everyone just does the same thing but there might be some fear that your husband doesn't want to admit or some inner personal resistance that he has that has nothing to do with intermittent fasting or living this type of lifestyle or going against you and the success that you want to have for yourself Michael had fears that were very legit to him and his personal well-being and his job and was he going to be able to go to work and have enough energy and when we addressed the fears that he had and we helped him overcome it that's when he jumped on board so it might be a fear that your husband has that's legit and has nothing to do with you uh, so keep that in mind when you're talking to your husband too um, where do I put my collagen protein now I put it in my coffee as a breakfast um, or I drink it in my um, my keto cream because that has collagen protein in it too so sometimes I'll have it as my post-workout sort of extend my fast drink um, but I'm researching some some new shakes so I'll let you guys know when I find out about that and then Kit had my husband and I are doing IF together however he is not on board with the keto like lifestyle yet I have been for a long time however just thrilled he's taking this step he is watching this video Hello, Kit Cap's husband. Thank you for what you do and sharing your experience and most of all successes. Oh, you're so welcome. And thanks for jumping on and congratulations to your husband for listening. Um, sometimes you have to listen for a while. I researched intermittent fasting for two years and thought people who intermittent fasted were completely crazy. Off their rocker. Off their rocker. I was like, who does that? Goes those many hours without eating. Um, but I changed my mind when something happened to me where um, it, it – it made me feel like I needed to make some changes and so I just looked at it through a different set of eyes and when I changed the way I was looking at it is when I really developed my passion for it and so, I, can, I can tell you for the guys it is the most flexible thing you can do once you start intermittent fasting it is so flexible because as guys sometimes you want to have some beers with the guys and have some you know peanuts or chips pizza. or whatever, whatever it is you do or pizza that's okay. You can do that when you intermittent fast. You can't do that if you're trying to be strictly keto. You just can't because you're not being keto. So that's where your uh, keto light came in. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. where keto light came in, and it's it is so flexible. You would not believe that you could keep yourself on track and have shorter workouts and uh, still enjoy the things you like to enjoy. That's why we like the keto like lifestyle. So you can be flexible. You don't have to be strict keto. Right. So once you get in the rhythm of intermittent fasting, you will find a lot of benefits. And I have way more energy than I used to have eating the big breakfast and eating the lunch. I have way more energy. And more time. And more time and better workouts. Right, right, right. <laughs> Uh, Teresa, oh, see, Bev, it's wonderful doing this with my husband. We've never had a plan on eating that we've done together. IF has been the answer. Thank you so much. Yeah, Bev, uh, congratulations for you guys doing it together. It is sort of like a, it's kind of like a thing, right? Like it's not like a diet or a way we eat. It's just sort of like it's our hobby. It's our passion. We have fun with it. We talk about it a lot. We, uh, we consider certain things. We, you know what I mean? Like it's sort of like our hobby that we have together as a married couple and we really really have found a lot of fun with that as well and I think that's probably why our kids jumped on board too. Teresa I'm in your July course and learning so much taking baby steps just love what I'm learning and can't wait till I mature into my true authentic self. Well Teresa you have your lifetime remember that there's no end date to creating a lifestyle it's just tweaking it and ebbing and flowing as your life changes and then 
really tapping into how you feel. I think when you make that connection to what you're doing and how it makes you feel is really where you find that drive and that grit, uh, quote unquote, um, to really pursue this farther and take the chances when you mature of trying something that seems outlandish. Um, like, you know, like we've even given up IPA beer because it doesn't, wasn't making us feel good. Not completely. Not completely, but we don't drink it the way we used to because right. it was making us feel bad because we got to that next level of healthy. Um, and so, um, you know, I would have never imagined Michael coming to me and having that conversation with me. It was like, do you think the beer we're drinking could be? I'm like, yeah, probably. And we now we just don't drink it in the same way. And it, it has. It's opened up this new level of well-being that we never thought we would feel. Um, and so you have to just sometimes – have those kind of conversations and ask yourself those questions. Wow. Is that glass of wine, that thing that's keeping me from getting to my next goal. And this one right here said it to me very clearly one day when I was eating a bag of very healthy avocado oil potato chips. And he said, do you know, you're like a bag of chips away from having your dream body. Right. And my initial reaction was like, screw you. <laughs> but then I was like, Oh darn, he's right. Like I could eat a whole bag of these things. And what purpose are they serving me other than they're crunchy, they salty and they taste good. Like they were keeping me from having my dream body. And so now I don't buy those potato chips anymore because the likelihood of me eating the entire bag is pretty high. And then I'll be bummed that I don't have my dream body. So, you know, we have to be realistic about those things and take some of the things that people say to us, um, and, and stop and pause. Like, are they being critical or is there some truth in that? And there was a lot of truth in what he said and he wasn't saying it in a mean way. I took it in a mean way cause I don't want to give up my chips, but I also, he also knew I wasn't happy with, um, the way my body was looking. And so I had to make a choice. And so I gave up the avocado oil chips. Now I don't give up all chips, but I just don't open them up in my house because an open bag is an empty bag. And so I'm grateful now for that comment because I always, we always go back to that, like, oh, I'm a bag of chips away from whatever, or you're a bag of cookies, or you're a sneak treat, or you're that glass of wine, or you're that whatever away from what it is you ultimately want. And if you're clearly stating what your goal is, and your goal is to have a healthy brain, and your goal is to have energy, and your goal is to lose your muffin top, and your goal is to not feel self-conscious about how the, your body feels in your clothes, then you have to think, is it that wine that's keeping me from those goals and how important is your wine to you? Yeah. And, and when we started out, I mean, I was intermittent fasting and I was watching what I was eating. I thought I felt like I was doing all the right things, but there were some Friday nights where, you know, you'd be with friends or something and you have like one too many beers than you should have had and you just don't feel good. You know, and and it's slowing. You're not making the kind of progress you want to make. And then you have to really ask yourself: Is it is that worth it? Is it yeah. worth? And trust me, I'm a beer guy. I love my beer. Uh, but if it's keeping me from where I want to be, I mean, I had swelling in my feet. Now, as a healed man, yeah. if I have the wrong kind of beer, I'm gonna feel it. I mean, we got some beer uh, uh, one time at uh, Whole Foods. You know, where you can get the growler bought that home and i i got to i got an instant backache from drinking it and i'm like i haven't done anything to hurt my back and i'm telling you i knew it, it was the beer because beers can be toxic because it's not distilled you're better off drinking some high, high grade tequila or vodka if you're gonna have a drink you got to be really careful with the beers beers okay but you have to be careful we should do a, a talk on beer yeah. <laughs> and wine and liquors but that beer can take you down and uh, there's times it won't take you down but there's times that it will because it's it's not distilled and it can be toxic to your body and that's where really listening to the signs and signals that your body's sending you and becoming mature in this process will benefit you because the problems michael was having with his feet and the aches he had in his back he would have never associated with beer but as he started to heal and then as you start to really listen to the signs and signals and you're like associating beer with not making you feel good or the extra carbs are keeping or making him fall asleep at three o'clock in the afternoon and you know, all these things and you go, okay, yeah, that's not worth it. And you start taking things away and then you have a beer at a place like whole foods. And for some reason it just was a bad batch of beer. And then he goes, Oh, the only thing I did different was have a beer. 
and my back hurts. Okay, so it was the beer. But if you're drinking beer every day or you're doing these things every day and you're not making exceptions and willing to take an opportunity to take them out, then you don't make the connection mentally to that feeling that you have in your body. Then what happens is we start reaching for things that cover up the symptoms and we don't identify them. And that's the thing that I think we had the biggest aha moments on was for me too, even with gluten. Like I never knew gluten was the reason my stress incontinence was so bad, but it was causing me to retain water. And when I'm retaining water, I have all this extra water in me. And then you have this extra water in you and you go for a run and then you have problems. Okay. Well, me healing has allowed me the opportunity to go make the connection between what I do in my everyday life what I do in my nutrition, and then how my body looks and feels. Now, today at 52, the only thing different that I've done in my running is clean up my diet. Taking away soy, taking away all dairy that intolerates me, and have no exceptions at all to gluten whatsoever. I don't put gluten in my body. And now I don't have a stress incontinence problem. If I had not identified those things in my nutrition through this journey as I matured, then at some point I would have had a surgery and the surgery would have been that thing that they hoist up your bladder and you see it on TV, all the lawyers who are going to help you with your law case for the people who have had this surgery and now they're having complications. Like, you know, it's like you go down this path of trying to have these quick fixes or covering up the symptoms when if you just listen and know that nutrition drives every end result that your body goes through chemically, that you can fix it all yourself. Who knew intermittent fasting and living a keto-like lifestyle would help with stress incontinence for women? But I have women message me every day saying that their stress incontinence is not a problem anymore. No surgery needed, no medication needed, no prescriptions from the doctor needed. Pay attention to how your body retains water when you're eating certain things and you can fix the problem. Mm -hmm. yep. Right, and yep. with Michael it was gout. Yep. So, and, I, uh, and I totally feel the triggers, like if I, uh, overdo it somewhere in my diet or drinking one too many beers, I'm going to feel it. I'll feel it instantly in my feet. So that trigger now, I appreciate it because I, I know, I know if I've gone wrong somewhere in my nutrition and I can like dial it back, dial it back that, that fast. Instead of buying expensive shoes over expensive shoes over expensive shoes over foot inserts and prescriptions. Like you just don't drink no. the nasty beer. Um, Roseanne says it, it just does not seem natural to have to keep up with supplementing electrolytes. It's dangerous to supplement with potassium. Just want to feel comfortable getting it in my diet. Okay, so it's only dangerous to people who have a problem processing potassium. Um, and some people have a, pro a problem processing potassium. Um, um, what we need, electrolytes, especially when we're drinking 100 to 150 ounces of water a day because you're flushing out electrolytes. So they have to be replenished. And if they're not being replenished with food, nutrients because you're fasting for a majority of your day you have to take them supplementally so you have to just find your comfort zone with the potassium that your body needs that's not going to be dangerous for you i drink only mineralized water throughout my day and i drink 100 to 150 ounces and i have no potassium is issues whatsoever but i also have a very very limited um, list of foods that i eat now because most food makes me sick so you have to just figure that out for yourself but potassium is not dangerous for everyone unless you're hyper 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 dosing yourself on it uh tina trying not to miss any videos at day six i feel like i'm finally getting the hang of this yeah tina you should be at day six and it just gets better so just keep doing what you're doing you're on the tail end of the worst part um amanda what about gastric bypass can someone intermittent fast safely with this type of surgical background um i don't i can't give you the medical answer to that but i can give you the experience answer for that and we have had several women go through our course uh, who have had gastric bypass surgery and they do it very successfully and they come out with a really great um, outlook on what it was they did with for their bypass surgery so what it was that led them to that in the beginning and managing um, their food intake and I know my I have a family member who had gastric bypass surgery and she doesn't listen to her body and doesn't pay attention to what her doctor advised her to do as far as how to nutrient her body and she's very sick so 
it all goes back to nutrients and it all goes back to how you're fueling your body. And with ga gastric bypass surgery, I know you have a very limited amount of food that you consume in a day and hopefully you're supplementing with some vitamins to get your uh, nutrients in you. But I always say it's worth trying. There's no harm and no foul in, in practicing intermittent fasting. It allows your body an opportunity to be empty and to really have um, – the chance to heal itself. So there's nothing wrong with taking a certain amount of hours in your day and just putting nothing in it. Nothing wrong whatsoever. Uh, Kit Hab. Oh, Michael, I have major issues with my feet. I suspect because I'm overweight, I don't drink beer or any alcohol. However, this has my curiosity peaked. Yeah, so Kit Hab, I would say just keep paying attention to when your feet hurt and when your feet don't hurt. Keep that food journal that we have you do in the course. That will help you identify certain things that could be causing a flare-up. And it's um, usually an intolerance to something. Yeah, pay attention to yeast. yeast. So it doesn't have to be necessarily beer. beer, but it could be gluten. It could be yeast. And uh, I could tell you something that they're doing with, with beer nowadays is a lot of these companies – they're getting more bang with it for their buck with high rise yeast. It's a new thing they're doing. And I have, I've been a beer drinker from way back and I've never had an issue with beer. Uh, now I can, I can feel it. I can have issues with certain beers. So I have to be really discriminating about which, which beers that I drink. So you have to be careful with the yeast because you can find yeast in a lot of things that you're consuming and that will give you that those uh, the, the foot issue, so you have to watch it. Yeah, and the best thing I can say if you're not sure if you're intolerant to something is I, I do a seven-day test, and I teach a seven-day test. So for seven days, take stuff out of your diet. So take all gluten out of your diet for seven days, um, and then put it back in and see how your body responds. For me, I took everything out because I was so sick. So I took all soy out, all dairy, and all gluten out. And I had, within seconds of consuming something, I had a reaction in my body. And that's how I knew soy was so dangerous for me is I took it out. I took it out and off. So no, no, um, no anything in my environment, no, nothing on my skin, no deodorant, nothing in our house. I took all the candles out that had soy in them. Anything that had soy was removed from our home. And it was a tiny little piece of turkey bacon, which is the better bacon, this big of a piece that I popped in my mouth and consumed and within seconds had a reaction to soy less at them that was in that product. And so I don't do soy. Um, and if something slips in accidentally, I immediately have a reaction. The same thing with gluten. I would consume gluten and I would gain seven pounds in water in a night's sleep. That's what it does to my body. And now if I have repeated gluten, what happens is my foot breaks out in red blisters and they swell up and then they peel and they're itchy and they're gross. And so I don't want to have that on my feet. So I don't need gluten. And so it comes out of people in a bunch of different ways, but you have to completely eliminate it from all aspects of your life and then reintroduce it. And then the reaction that you get will tell you whether you have um, some sort of intolerance to it. And reactions vary by person. Some people with gluten sensitivities have uncontrollable diarrhea, stomach cramping. Uh, mine comes out in my skin and water weight. Michael's was gout for him. Um, so a bad reaction is a reaction. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be textbook or there's not one specific thing that you're looking for. It's just a bad reaction. We have friends that are allergic to kale and or and broccoli. Yeah. You know? So you might be consuming a lot of that. Uh, you know, that raw kale can do a number on you yeah. if you're you allergic it to it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Bev, can I have help with foot neuro neuropathy? Probably. Uh, you know, intermittent fasting is the opportunity to let your body be empty and utilize its energies and resources to help your body. So when we have food in our body and we don't know what the things are that are causing us intolerances, our body is working super diligently to break it down, digest it, put it in its place. Then what happens if we're, if we're insulin resistant or pre-diabetic or we have these intolerances going on your body body is firing off like all these warning signals and so there's all this stuff going on what ends up happening is you eventually break down breaking down happens in enough a number of ways too for me it happened to be insulin resistance and pre-diabetic for a lot of women it's autoimmune disorders we have never ever as a society ever had such a uh, um, intense amount of people, especially women suffering from autoimmune disorders. Why do you think that is? And it's because we cover up symptoms and we don't identify them 
and correct them nutritionally. So take the stuff out, allow your body to be clearly empty, clean fasting for a certain amount of time. And this is what we teach in our course, three weeks of clean fasting to identify what it is that's causing you to be um, in a situation with an autoimmune disorder, losing your mind, uh, insulin resistant, gout, stress incontinence, cystic acne, uh, abdominal body fat, whatever, depression, whatever it is. If your body is suffering in some way, it's because it's fighting. It's fighting what you're doing to it, and it's trying to tell you to stop. And if we don't listen and stop and correct what it is we're doing nutritionally, our body will break down. And how it breaks down varies with people. Autoimmune disorders, like I just said, I listed them all off. It could be a number of things. So listen, stop, empty and correct and then go about your business is the best way to go um diane inspiring oh thanks diane you're i always love when you're here you always such, say such positive things for us and i love it um i love having such a great community of people here so yeah do the work clean fast identify what the triggers are that your body is is letting you know about a headache could be enough of a trigger um so pay attention to those things are warning signs and your body will only warn you for so long and then it'll say enough is enough i'm tired of warning you you're not going to listen to me i'm going to stop you in your tracks no one wants to be stopped in their tracks with a health situation trust me you do not want to be stopped in your tracks with a health situation so heed to the warning signs that your body is sending you and then adjust accordingly accordingly that's why we're here we want to share with you what it is that we're experiencing and some things that we've done and for the women in this community jump into the course jump into the three-week course and if you have to do it an additional three weeks and be a transitional course member do that as well your body and your life will thank you for learning how to really go back to having that i call it an intimate relationship with yourself we have been so um conditioned to turn off how we feel and we've been turned off to what it is our body's telling us because we want a quick fix we want an immediate response we want to get that result we want to only do it for 30 days and if it doesn't work we're going to quit no it's a lifetime of destruction that we've done to ourselves and we deserve a lifetime of of construction um, and you should do this forever um, because if you stop doing what's making you feel good you'll go back to feeling bad and that's why we really really encourage and, and, there, and there's so much stuff that's just basic science dealing with your mitochondria and free radicals and the Krebs cycle and all that stuff you probably remember from way back from science class but if you look at some of that stuff and study it it's absolutely amazing uh, what we do to cellularly what we're doing to our bodies when you know we're causing all this damage and that's why you hear so much about antioxidants and all the things you should be doing to uh to, to fix it but we never really we just keep doing the same things over and over and over and we're never fixing all this damage mm -mm, no um and i was uh, i'm actually working with a company right now and i was on a webinar with the doctor yesterday um talking about a shake uh about uh, that he developed that helps aged broken professional athletes heal their bodies and become youthful again and i'm like i'm an aging athlete technically you know like i want to know the science behind that and i want to know what's in that because what if i can what if i can reverse what it is that we've done damage wise like i don't want bad knees i don't want a bad back i don't want bad shoulders i don't want those bad things but i do want to continue what it is i'm doing in my athletic um, desires as far as what I'm doing with my fitness so we'll share some of that stuff with you guys when we get more information but it's fascinating what is out there nutritional science wise and we should pay attention we should do our due diligence we should hang out in communities that foster that we should hang out with people who foster that and we really should pay attention to those signs and signals our body is sending us and we do it through a process of maturing don't jump all in in the beginning and give everything up and, and when I used to teach women about you know changing some products in their household to the healthier side of things you don't necessarily want to do a clean sweep of your covers in your refrigerator that's devastating and expensive and throws a lot of stress and shock on people but you want to find things slowly and, and the best thing i could say is turn around those labels read what's in your candles read what's in your tuna fish read what's in your toothpaste read what's in your shampoo and find those ingredients that are causing you problems and then just replace them with ones that don't and that's the best way to really transition and mature your way into creating a lifestyle that you can 
live out for the she rest of She was trying to figure out why she was tearing up every time she would light up <laughs> candles around the house. I thought it was, she was just getting romantic and <laughs> she was tearing up for me, but I guess it wasn't me. It was the, the soy <laughs> candles. It was the soy candles. Yeah, and it got so bad for me that it was, um, it was only when I burned them that I felt really, um, my face would swell up, my eyes would swell up, and I would tear and have all these bad reactions um, to they couldn't even be in the home. Like if it was in the bathroom, down the hall, around the corner, I felt it in my system. And so that's why I said we are now at the point where we've cleansed everything out of our house, and if something comes in that has soy in it, I immediately feel it. I don't even have to look. I just toss it in the trash. Um, but, and you'll get that way too. That's maturity. Uh, and then you have to listen to those signs and signals or your body will go down the path of stopping sending you those uh, warning signals and it'll stop you in your track and you'll end up in a situation that might not be reversible. So catch it while you can reverse it, catch, catch it while you can fix it, and then get yourself from he, from sick to healing to healed. And that really is the maturity process of you find out you don't like how you're feeling, you go on a process of healing yourself, and then you do whatever you have to do to stay healed. Yeah. And that's exactly where we're at today. Yeah. We want you guys to be there with us. So with that, we're going to close out today. If you have any questions about anything that we've talked about today, always feel free to email us. You can email us at ifketolife.com or ifketolife at gmail.com. Um, I know a lot of people have been messaging me about what it is we're doing with our supplementation. Again, if you want information about what we're doing to enhance our keto-like lifestyle and what it is we're doing with our workouts with the supplementation that we're choosing um, now for ourselves, email me at if keto life at gmail.com and put supplements in the subject line so I can find your message and I'll get you some information about what we're doing and um, you can order some sample packs from us as well so if you want a sample before you buy but it really has taken us to the ne next level and got us to that next level of maturity with what we're doing with our health well-being and our fitness have a great Friday have a fantastic weekend we'll see you guys back here on Friday we'll see you somewhere else in the social media world we look forward to getting your emails um, and we look forward to helping you um, enhance what it is you're doing with your keto like lifestyle have a great day have a great weekend